Is that warm enough for you, buddy? Yeah. Is that warm enough? All right, don't you go to the bathroom now. <laughs> that ain't what we do in this water. Step on up there, Titan, as if he needs an introduction. You all know Titan Schilling. He is now my new brother in Christ. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you are a family member or a friend or maybe one of his friends in school or church or anybody that's involved in kids' ministry, we want to invite you. Just stand with us as we celebrate his decision to place faith in Christ. I want to share with you the words he gave to his dad and his dad wrote and sent to us. So let me share what he gave to us. He said, growing up in church, I decided I wanted to be baptized and I knew that I needed to follow Jesus. So I started talking to my parents. I wanted to be a Christian. I learned to get to God that I must go through Jesus. So I prayed and I asked him to forgive me of my sin and to be born in my heart. I felt God clean my heart. I know now that when I'm bad, I can ask Jesus to for, uh, and, and receive his forgiveness, and he will wipe my board clean. <laughs> Ain't that a good East Texas vernacular right there? I love it. Thank you, Jesus, for letting me be a Christian, and thank you, God, for always loving me. Isn't that rich? Praise God. Well, we've had good conversations about Jesus and how baptism is a symbol of the life, death, burial, and resurrection of our your Jesus. You know, the Bible says that Jesus was baptized, and the word in the Greek literally means he was immersed. Some people ask, well, how do we know that Jesus, it was so long ago, how do we know they were baptized by immersion? Because that's what the word literally means. It means to go under, which is why it tells the story that the old way of life is put away, and where race will walk in newness of life. So I want to ask you, become your Lord and your Savior? Amen. Well, based upon your profession of faith in Christ, it's my honor to baptize you in the name of our Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. All right, you ready? Buried in the likeness of his death, raised to walk in newness of life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Hollis, your turn. Come on now, sweetheart. Next is Big Sister. This is Hollis, and in the same, if you're a family member, a friend, someone who's been a part, used by the Lord to help her grow in her faith in Christ, I invite you to stand now. Let me share with you her decision for Christ. She wrote these words. She says, sometimes while at church, I would worry I wouldn't go to heaven because I knew that I had done some bad things in my life. I disobeyed my parents, I lied, and I was very mean to my brother and my sister. I learned that through Jesus, my sins can be forgiven. So I prayed to God, and I asked him into my heart. Now I know that I will go to heaven because Jesus is my Savior, and he forgives me of all my mistakes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hollis, amen. Is it your public profession that you have prayed to trust Jesus Christ to be your Lord and to be your Savior? Yes. I know he has. I've enjoyed listening to you talk about how Jesus has saved you. It's my honor to be your brother in Christ. It's a privilege to be your pastor. And I want to baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death. Raised to walk in the To the great Macedonia Baptist Church. And by the way, just to let you know, I didn't go to Africa. This is one of my normal shirts. Somebody says, you go to Africa? I'm like, no, I wear this kind of crazy shirts all the time. We love you. We are so glad that you guys are in fellowship with us this morning. And um, please grab a bulletin if you don't mind and fill out the, uh, the tear off on the back and put, in a, put a prayer request in or just let us have a record of your visit. We love you guys. We are so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning at the MAC. Let's all have a time of fellowship and shake hands. Amen.
so glad he said, see I, now a new creation in Christ, the old has gone, there's new life, I live by faith, not by sight, there is a new day written down in glory. Don't you just love King Jesus? Lord, we love you. We just give it up to you this morning, Father. Everything we do, everything we say, everything that we are, Lord, is because of you, Jesus. And Lord, we just want to rattle the gates of heaven for you. Amen.
When I, we sing this song, and, and I'll be honest, just standing over there, I, I stopped singing. I just wanted to listen to y'all sing for a little bit. And uh, some of y'all singing like you mean it. Oh, my goodness. I, I, I had to turn to the book of Acts, which is short for the Acts of the Church, the Acts of the Apostles, and what God was doing at the very beginning, the genesis of the church era. And God was on the move. He was pouring out his spirit, and he was pleased to gather wherever people were willing to cry out to him and to meet with him. And so much so, so the Holy Spirit filled them and stirred them up. And throughout the Old Testament, even those who were on the outside looking in, who are of all the other nations, they would hear this activity in Israel. And they'd say, what's happening? They'd say, God is in the midst of them. And then you read in the Exodus later, and God's people come to a place where they ask the question to Moses, is God even among us anymore? I want to tell you, friends, in this room and in our church, and as I watch and listen and see, I've been able to enjoy conversations with pastors throughout our nation and even the world this week, and I want to tell you, God is on the move God is doing something. I want to tell you, friends, that we, I want to cast the sail of the Lord for Macedonia. I, I, you, know, you know the old hymn, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others you are calling, don't pass me by. Land of Goshen. I think the worst thing that could happen to us is look a week, month, a year from now back and say, man, how come we didn't get in on that? And you have every right to kick me to the curb, not Nikki and the kids, but just me, okay? I mean, there's just something, my friends, is all I'm saying about our, our willingness to cry out to God. And if there's one thing that I begin to listen to hear pastors say and to encourage one another was this. Let's don't be afraid to tarry and to just wait a little bit and give God time. I think we have so uh, hurried ourselves, so programmed ourselves, that we have programmed ourselves right out of God. And we've told God, this is the time frame that you have to work in my life. And the clock's ticking. God help us. The one thing that I see as evidence when you read through that passage in Acts, it concludes with this statement. It said that the believers went out and they spoke the word of God with great boldness. At times people ask me, hey, do you, do you pastor a spirit-filled, spirit-led church? I know what they're asking. 
And my answer is, you better believe it. Because by God's grace, we are a people who are speaking the name of Jesus and the word of God with great boldness. That's the greatest proof, greatest test of the genuineness of your faith. That in meekness, but yet boldness, we're going to testify of the goodness of the Lord. Friends, I'm going to open up this time for prayer. Let's pray, God, don't pass me by. God, don't pass my church by. Don't pass my state, my nation. God, come to us. As the spring rains water the earth, Hosea says, so come to your people. It might be just one morning that God wants to use that is the brokenness that breaks the dam, that is the pouring forth of the power of God to change lives. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we come to this moment of prayer, as we move even outwardly to the altar and even creating this just spiritual altar where we stand before you, we make a unified declaration that you are God and there is no other but you. Moments ago, Father, we prayed with the reality that Saturday laid silent and Sunday came. And the glory of heaven itself that raised Jesus to life again is the same power that is at work saving people all throughout the world from Australia to Asia, throughout North America and South America, throughout Europe. God, there, I believe, is no place right now that escapes your attention for you love people and you are desiring that they come to know Jesus as Savior and Lord. And God, that even begins right here, right now at Macedonia Baptist Church. Oh, Father, settle on us this morning. May the word, may the meditation of our heart be pleasing to you, God, as we cry out to you. We hunger for you, Lord. We're thirsting for you. Where there has been nothing but barren desert land, return rivers of blessing. Lord, a revival of your holiness, a returning to you. God, may we truly say that we are in love with you with all of our heart, soul, and may it transform us into people. We yield to you. Please say, God, have your way today. And we pray. Amen. Jesus sought me 
people said. Amen. Uh, there are, you know, there are moments, church, when, uh, I don't know about y'all, I don't know when, obviously, each of us in this room, when you came to faith in Christ, um, my twin and I were, Richard and I were um, saved as we were, I think, in about the middle of our sophomore year, and um, we began to grow in the knowledge of the Lord and what it means to be in His presence. And man, we, we had the privilege of being a part of a, an incredible youth group, a student ministry, and a youth pastor who was so in tune with the Holy Spirit. I mean, he, um, man, he was a worshiper of God, walked with the Lord. And so it was, it was the normal thing for us on a weekly basis just to be in the presence of the Lord. And those moments where, you know, and I don't know, maybe it's just unique to being youthful. Um, we don't know any better, but just to obey the prompting of the Lord when he moves. I remember one night, this young man came in with a, one of those big yard, you know, Rubbermaid trash cans. You know the ones I'm talking about, the big ones. And where, what in the world, where is this going? <laughs> and he said, I, um, I got to confess to you all that I've not been real and, and honest and I've had secret sin and, 
and he went in, and I mean, he brought in a, a trove of stuff. I mean, you know, you know the things that this generation, of, what is he talking about? Cassette tapes and CDs? <laughs> That's before things were digital, y'all. And Man, he started chunking stuff. I mean, just just everything you think, yeah, that's that's straight of the world. It's yeah, that that doesn't honor God. Okay, yeah. I mean, VHS tapes to all kind of stuff, posters. I mean, just throw it in the trash can. And he said, I want to get right with God. And he said, This is just trash. It's garbage. And it's destroying my relationship with the Lord. And and that's just one of, of many just encounters of the spontaneous moving and prompting of the Holy Spirit throughout my time as a student of watching students get right with God, right with one another, and then word would get out, man, God's really doing something at that church and that student ministry. And so, I mean, it just continued to grow and multiply as we just were living out what Acts talked about, that God continued to add to their number daily those who were being saved because of the testimony of people who were honest with God, honest with one another, and said, I know I'm not perfect, but I'm going to a place where God is perfecting me, and I'm learning what it means to be a follower of Christ, and others are helping me. There was one night that a student who was new in his faith just grabbed his Bible, and he said, I believe that this is the, a verse that God wants us to listen to. And it's, it was out of the Psalms, and he says that God heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up their wounds. Amen. It was like a Holy Spirit just bombed, just exploded in the place. And without, you know, our youth pastor needing to even stand up and invite people, you know, hey, if that speaks to you and you need to come forward, then I'm asking you to do that. No, they prompted by the Holy Spirit already did that. They just flooded the altar and said, I need Jesus. And I, I know that I'm broken in my heart, and, but I don't know how to fix me. I need help. And you know what home life represents for kids. And they said, I'm, I'm just desperate for God. And so we would minister and share. I don't know that the need has changed in 2000. 23, that people are broken in their hearts. Where else should they be able to come but to a church of made up, comprised of broken people who are brokenhearted, but who are filled with God's spirit, ready to love the next family or person that God brings right through that door or the people that we meet outside that door that we share love and show love to them. I'm going to lead us in prayer, and I'm going to invite Mel and our team to come back up just for a time of just song of worship to the Lord. Normally we do it as our invitation, so it can be that. That your pastoral staff is here for prayer. We have a counseling room. We, 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 this whole room probably is going to be a counseling room. But We've heard some things shared, and, and maybe still you know before you leave, this is God is wanting you to respond today. God knows there, there may be another tomorrow, another Sunday. Um, we're going to come, and we're going to say, God, have your way. You do what you want to do. But the invitation is this, and as I prepared and prayed through and listening just to the, the word of God, that the Bible is clear what, what the Lord wants. He wants people to be made right with him. And the only way that you can be made right with God is through his son, Jesus Christ. So you need to receive him as your Lord and as your savior, as we witnessed in the waters. And I'm just going to say, man, I, I hadn't even thought about that this morning, but if you, we have the baptistry filled. Some of you have known Jesus but you've not been baptized. First step of obedience is to do what God's called you to do. So when we're done, if you want to be baptized, you know you've accepted Christ as your Savior, but you've never been baptized, and you'd like to do that, we can take care of that today. Just come on up, and I'll baptize you as a follower of Christ. If there's an area of just disobedience that God has called you to get right on, 
Revival could be just one decision away that says, God, I need to get right with you, and it's time. Some of you have been trying to manage your sin. You can't manage sin. It will kill you. It will devour you. It's only through repentance and jettisoning it. I mean, getting rid of it is what the Bible says. Walking away from it. It's only at that place that you will able to experience the rest that your soul is longing for. You can only find that rest when you know you're right with God. My prayer is this, is that the Holy Spirit will either be a comforter or a great disturber. You can thank me for that. If you are not at rest right now, I am praying that God will so mess you up that you will know you need to repent and turn your heart 100% completely over to him today. So I'm gonna pray. And we're just going to stand and whatever response you need to give to God to obey him, we're here to receive you. We're going to worship the Lord for a little bit. And then when the Lord says we're done, we're done. Hey, everybody, it's Pastor Chris. Just want to say thanks for watching today. I hope you were encouraged in your relationship with Christ from everything that was taught and said in the service. Listen, as a church family, we're praying for you and honored to have you as a part of our church family, whether you're with us here on campus or online as a participant through our web uh, ministry. So go to MacBC, stay connected for updated information. And as well, you can always reach out to us, whether a phone call or an email, and let us know how we can be in prayer for you or how we can send you information and resources to help you grow in your relationship with Christ. All right, we love you in the Lord, and we look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you. 